verse 7 surat al lazina an'amta alayhim ghayri al maghdubi alayhim wala dhalin that guide us to what the path the path of those upon whom you have bestowed your favor and not of those who have evoked your anger or of those who are astray. Now in this verse, in this verse, the reciter makes an even clearer explanation of the desired path. That is, O oh Allah, I am asking for the path of an amta alayhim. You have blessed and not of those who are adwalin and maghdu. That is, we are clarifying for ourselves also. We are highlighting for ourselves also that whose path we want to be on and whose path we do not want to be on, whom we want to and we should follow and whom we should not or we should not even want to follow. And amta alayhim means the blessed people who are blessed with Allah's pleasure, who are blessed with Allah's guidance and love, and who will be blessed with Allah's mercy and Jannah. And this refers to whom? The prophets, the messengers, the companions, the martyrs, and the guided pious believers. But here again, I will highlight that it's just making dua to be guided on the path of anamta alayhim is a sufficient. We can, can we just sit and keep on praying that Allah guide us to the path of the people you blessed and we can expect that we and our children will be guided? No, no, not for sure, no. What we need to do is we need to study the lives of all of these and anamta alayhim, their manners, their ethics, their obedience, their dealings, what they ate, they wore, how they spent their days and nights, what they earned, how they dealt, what they gave, what they took. And not only this, but we need, what we need to do is, if we want our children to follow the Anamta Alehim, we need to introduce their lives to our children also. We need to introduce the Muslim heroes to our children also. I request all of you to narrate stories of the prophets and the companions to your children. Stop, for God's sake, stop the old bedtime stories. The stories of Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. And what, what do we gain out of that? What, what do we gain out of all those stories? We, we just make our daughters go and live in a fool's paradise in a fairy land. And the daughter to whom the mother has narrated stories of Sleeping Beauty and Rapunzel and Cinderella, she lives trying to be Snow White, she waits for her Prince Charming. And then in her co-education university, she starts the hunt for her Prince Charming. And finally, when one fine morning, she walks up with, with the Prince Charming and introduces the person to her parents. Then the parents cry and refuse and retaliate. And we don't realize that how this all started. Tell them the stories of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Tell them the stories of daughters like Fatma to Zahra, who will be the leaders of the ladies of Jannah. Tell them the stories of mothers like Umm Sulaim, Umm Amara, Hazrat Safiya, Hazrat Isma, Hazrat Khansa. Tell them the stories of sisters like Fatma, Hazrat Fatma bin Khattab, who was the great sister of Hazrat Umar bin Khattab. Introduce to them these jewels and pearls of Islam, the companions of the Prophet so that they may develop the pride of Muslim history. They start feeling proud to be a Muslim. They feel proud to own such ancestors in Islam rather than being a complex, introverted and a scared Muslim. And then al Maktoub. According to most, uh, the Maktoub means, and it refers to the Jews, as in many verses of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions their being deserving of Allah's wrath and anger and fury. In Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
bother bin Allah, bother the Jews because of their behavior of disobedience, but full obstinacy and stubbornness, they have been labeled as Mahdu. And at Dualim, these are the people who were astray. This refers to the Christians, the followers of Hazrat Isa as they were blessed with guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they chose to go astray, leaving the guidance of their book. Now, before ending, I would again want to highlight another thing that would just saying and then saying out Ami, is that sufficient? Just praying to save ourselves and our progenies from the path of the Jews and the Christians is just praying sufficient? No, for sure no. What, what happens and what is happening? Muslims all over the world, they offer salah, congregational salah, they recite the Surah Fatiha, and there's a loud Amin with which the whole mosque echoes. But after the salah, they get up, and what do they do? Dress up, eat, talk, behave, trade, marriage, all like Christians and Jews, adopting their customs, their norms, their dress code, following them socially, culturally, economically, all respects. Then just praying and saying loud army, this won't be sufficient. We say, we need to say no. We need to say no to following them, to copy them, to idolize them, to glamorize them as a nation. As I said in Surah Qatrun, Lakum deenukum waliya deen. For you is your deen, your code of life, your mode of ethics. And for us is our deen, our mode of life and our code of ethics. This is what we need to adopt in our life. We need to say no to all their mannerisms. 